Hello and welcome to this video on thermodynamic relations and partial derivatives. By the end of this video you'll be able to explain why we're interested in partial derivatives for thermodynamics and use partial derivatives to calculate the change in a variable. Now as we discuss with equations of state we need equations for uh, for the properties of things so that we're able to do things like uh, design and optimization. It's not feasible to use tables for these things. And so uh, we commonly have equations of state which will normally be a function of which is uh, pressure being equal to some function of temperature and volume. And so an example that we've looked at with this is the pang robinson equation of state. Now if we look at the types of problems that we do in thermodynamics when we're looking at fluid properties, then what we tend to be interested in is either the delta, uh, the delta H of a property or the delta S of a property and then that uh, tends to lead to an interest in delta H anyway. So we're not calculating uh, changes in pressures or directly interested in the, the pressure per se. So we tend to be interested in changes in enthalpy, changes in entropy. And so we've been calculating so far in this course changes in internal energy and enthalpy and entropy but we've been doing them in particular cases. And so the case we've been looking at the most is what is the change in those things for an ideal gas. And so, so we've got equations for that and we've got equations for incompressible solids and incompressible liquids, but we don't have uh, an equivalent equation for a real gas or a real liquid. And so, so these question marks here are the ones that we're going to fill in in, the, in this section. And so the reason that we have question marks there is because we don't have these equations. Okay, so we don't have direct equations for enthalpy and direct equations for entropy like we do for pressure. And so what we need to do is we need to be able to relate the pressure to changes in internal energy, to changes in enthalpy, and to changes to entropy. And this can be done using thermodynamic property relations, and that's what we'll be looking at in this section. Now, to get started on this, we need to look at some mathematical preliminaries. And so the, the main mathematical concept that we're going to be using in this section is the concept of partial differentials and total differentials. So what we're going to start with is by saying, well, if I've got a thermodynamic function, so in this case entropy, and I know that the entropy must be a function of temperature and pressure because if I define those two things, I can tell you what the entropy is. Um, and so instead of writing the thermodynamic variables I'm just going to write this in a in a general mathematical form here so that z is a function of x and y. Now we can figure out what the total differential is for, for z by taking the partial differential of z with respect to x so that's what we've done here and with respect to y and that's what we've done here. And so then multiply by dx, multiply by dy, and that gives us the total differential for z. Okay, so, so this is a very important concept. So if I give z a particular form, so here I've said that, that z's equal to x squared y cubed minus 2y. And in this plot here, I've just plotted uh, here are my z values, here are my y values, and here are my x values. So you can see that 
uh, the Z function creates a, a surface with respect to, to X and Y. And so what I want to do now is I want to calculate what the change in Z is if I have a change in X and a change in Y. And so what I'm doing here is defining the the partial differentials so that I'm able to define the total differential. So the partial differential with respect to x keeping y constant is given here and the partial differential with respect to y is given by this equation here. I can then substitute both of those terms into the equation and I get this equation for the total differential for z. Now, if I want to calculate the change in Z between two points, then what I'm using is a path, essentially. So, if you can imagine that I'm looking down on top of this plot that we had on the previous slide, so I'm looking down on top of this, then I've got my uh, Y axis here, so I've got my Y axis here, and I've got my X axis here, and I'm wanting to go from a point which is Z at X1, Y1 and I'm wanting to go to this point which is uh, Z at X2, uh, Y2 and so I can do this in two steps one of them is a step at constant x and then the second step is a step at constant y okay because z is a state function it doesn't matter how I get from one point to another and so I'm just taking two convenient steps and if I do something at fixed x and I'm changing y that uses this term here and if I'm doing something at fixed y but changing x then that uses this term here. So to calculate the change in Z I need to do things in two steps. And so here I'm going to do a step which is a constant Y. Okay, so, so I'm going between X2 and X1 with while staying at Y1. So that's taking this step along here. And so the change in Z is just the integral of my partial differential equation. Now I'm going to take a step up. Okay, so that's a step at constant X, so at X2. And I'm going from Y2 to, uh, sorry, from Y1 to Y2. And so this is done by uh, integrating my partial differential equation. When I add those two things together, I get the change in Z between uh, X1, Y1 and X2 and Y2. Okay, so and then I can sum together those two differential equation terms. Now if I substitute all these things in so so if I'm interested in uh, let's say going between um, x1 y1 equal to 0 over here and then x2 y2 equal to negative 1 so I'm going from a point somewhere in here okay and I'm going to a point uh, somewhere over here. Okay, so, so when I substitute these values into my partial differential equation or total difference equation, the value that I get is minus 28. Now if I substituted these numbers up here Okay, so my values for x1, y1, my values for x2, y2 into my original equation, then also I get 
delta Z is equal to minus 28. Now that's a bit deflating because I just spent all this effort deriving this equation here when I could have just used the original equation to get the same answer of uh, minus 28. But whilst for this particular example uh, it's a bit silly to do that and it is actually quite trivial, the difference between my uh, general mathematical variable, variable z and my thermodynamic variables of u and h is that I don't have equations for u and h. So, so what I'm doing is I'm using my partial differentials okay so for du and for dh to get me closer to getting an equation. Now what we see is immediately we get a term here that is very familiar. Okay, so du to t is just the constant volume heat capacity. Just like to h to t is the constant pressure heat capacity. But the issue is, is that we do not have an equation for this term. And we do not have an equation for this term. Okay, so, so the next uh, lecture we'll be looking at how we might be able to actually find what those things are. And we're happy with these, these two here, because we actually have equations for heat capacity and we have equations for constant pressure heat capacity at particular conditions. And we'll be able to use that to do our calculations later on. So to recap even though we have equations of state to relate pressure, temperature and volume, we do not have equations for internal energy, enthalpy and entropy. The total difference is comprised of, or the total differential is comprised of partial differentials with respect to each of its variables. And we are already familiar with some partial differential functions, i.e. those that define the constant volume and constant pressure heat capacities. Thank you for listening.